reading to you from a journey to the heart. So please get comfortable, settle into your breath. Just accept whatever your circumstances are right now, your internal environment, your external environment, and you're taking your seat like a, a Buddha. You're able to find your way into that place of uh, balance and equanimity. And we'll go there together. And this is a reading. Changes in the air. Just as the world around us changes and evolves, so do the circumstances and situations in our lives. We live in a universe that is alive, vibrant, and constantly evolving. Change is the way that nature, the universe, and the divine move us through each period of our lives and into our destiny. We are led to our next lesson, our next adventure. There's no need to deny change or fear it or fight against it. Change is inevitable. And just as the earth is in constant motion and transformation, so are we. To so take your place in the universal dance, the universal rhythm, allow change to happen and work with it as your life unfolds. Sometimes change comes in one smashing moment like a volcanic eruption. Other times it happens more slowly the way the winds and rain sculpt bridges out of canyons. Learn to trust your body, its signs, signals, warnings, and excited proclamations. We let the gathering clouds warn us of impending, impending storms. and We learn to study and predict tremors in the earth. In much the same way, our body can function as a barometer for our soul and its place in the constantly changing and evolving universe. So you are open now, more sensitive than you've been before. Change is coming. In fact, it's here. You can feel it in the air and you can feel it in yourself. Let's take a five breath pause. Join me in putting the left hand over the heart, bowing the head to the sacred nature of your practice. Maybe you feel really tapped in to soul and to spirit, or maybe you feel just dry and adrift. And either way, the process is the same. We come in through the doorway of the breath. We have compassion and mindful awareness of what our body is telling us. And we just open ourselves up to connection with something bigger, something bigger than us. And so may this practice tonight nourish us, may it open us up, may it strengthen us, and uh, may it just meet us where we are. Let's add a right hand on top of that. And uh, again, we're sending good energy out to others through this seat that we are privileged to sit in sitting squarely in the center of presence of divine love and grace. So with your next exhale, do send some good energy outward, whether it's those uh, in the family that just lost someone or anyone you know that is suffering, make it a way of sharing your practice with others. By sending love from your heart to theirs. And then let's lift the hands up and just face them toward the screen. Thank you very much. Send honor and recognition to each one of us as we practice. I'm just seeing the variety of shapes that hands come in, you know, just like all of us, so unique. Mm, thank you. Sending loving kindness to each one of you. And um, then let's meet together in wide knee child's pose on the mat. And I'm going to reestablish a little music. I'm going to rely on Susan to tell me uh, how the sound volume is.
That's better. It started off loud. Is it good now? I just don't want it to compete with my voice. Very good. About like that. All right, we're gonna go with that. <laughs> Great. Uh, so I will make sure that everyone is muted. Oh, a little dog. Good. Wide knee child's pose. And settle your hips. Nice and closely back towards your heels according to the ability of your body. And if your forehead doesn't touch the ground naturally, you might want to stack your hands. I think it's just really nice to start into practice with your forehead, your third eye, having a grounding point. You to rock your hips a little bit side to side, shift your rib cage a little bit left and right and see if you're able to snuggle your torso down a little bit closer to the earth. And then slide the breath in and out through your nose a little more deeply with every round of breath. And relax your belly and relax your, your grip on, on life and let something a little soft and opening start to take place. Notice where the shape is touching your body. Where are you feeling the opportunity to expand? Where is the folding and the contracted uh, part of the pose affecting you? Allowing your senses to soften and open. So you can have the eyes be soft, whether they are open or closed, you're starting to see, maybe through a little bit different lens or clearer. Start to listen to the sound of your breath and what is present in your environment right now. Both inside the room, outside the room. It's possible that your thoughts are roaring so loudly that you don't hear much else other than that at this point. And I, I think that will change in the next little bit of time. And feel, feel the senses, the skin, feel the touch of the mat underneath you, the clothing, the temperature, the chance to let the body drop just a little bit more, let your heart soften toward the ground. And then if you haven't yet extended your arms, extend them out now and walk your palms over to the left. So we'll stay within our wide knee child's pose, but bring in a side bend. Again, forehead can drop to the ground if that's possible. And if not, that's okay. I'd like you to pull your right hip back a little further toward your right heel and walk your right fingertips out away from your body. So you're really on that diagonal. Smoothly, deeply breathe into the right side of your torso. And walk the hands across center over to the other side on the diagonal off to the right. Snug your left hip back towards your left heel. Reach out through your left fingertips. Drop your forehead. Expand through the left side body, sending breath and awareness right there. Encouraging the body to expand and open. Okay. Let's walk you back to the center and uh, meet up in tabletop. So on hands and knees and have a little check-in. Just make sure that your wrists are right underneath your armpits and your kneecaps are under your hip sockets. Let's start to go through cat and cow. Curling the toes under, lifting the hips up, lift the heart up, smooth inhale is here. Long extended exhale, relax your feet, draw your navel in, round your spine. We'll start to flow like that, deepening uh, the length of inhale and exhale. Maybe starting to weave a sound into the breath. Inhale, bringing us some fresh energy, some fresh prana. 
and exhale, chance to release, let go. And shedding the day bit by bit, arriving into practice. And it's saying a few more rounds with cat and cow. And this, see if you want to initiate the movement from your tailbone, which would mean sending the tailbone up first, then the ribs drop, then the heart lifts, and the inverse. Tuck the tail and let that rounding ripple all the way up until it gets to the back of your head. A couple more times. Make sure you keep breathing. Quickest ways to come into mental and emotional balance is to focus on deep, smooth breaths. And back into a flat back together. Lean onto your left knee and send your right foot behind you. Curl the right toes under and put the ball of the right foot on the mat. And then shorten your left side waist and look over your left shoulder toward the back of your mat. Keep pressing out through the right heel and feel that you're really able to get a stretch through the right calf muscle, the right side body. Nice little healthy squeeze on the left side waist. And then back to center, pick the right heel up, press out through as though you're pushing the wall behind you away. Spinal balance, shift into the right hand and send your left fingertips forward. Tuck your chin in a little bit and also draw the low belly up if you can. Breathe in, breathe out, and you can stay, or you can crunch with me, knee and elbow come underneath. Inhale, send it back out. Got it, let's match up breath. Exhale when you're pulling it in. Inhale when you're lengthening out. One more time. Hold, stay. If you're able, bend the right knee, take the left hand back, grab the right foot, you know, diagonal uh, bind here. Take a couple of breaths. No rush, no force. Put your left hand down, step your right foot through. As you pick your right hand up, the right foot replaces the right hand and bring yourself stacked right up, hands onto the right knee. Widen your right foot, and maybe even spread through the toes. And let's keep the hand on the right thigh for now and pulse the pelvis toward the right heel and then pull it back a little bit. We're kind of getting a sense of um, both the hips being level and um, just getting kind of steady and organized into our base. Staying with breath, calm, steady gaze out in front of you. Settle your hips uh, down low and then hug the outer hips in energetically and bring your arms up overhead. Good. So first reach with wide fingers and then smooth your shoulders down and back a little bit if you can. Stay or interlace your fingers and cup them around the base of your skull. Widen your elbows out. Stay really steady in your feet, grounded into your legs. So you don't tip over. Deep breath right here. And then release your hands. Bring them straight down. If you have a block and you want it, bring it on over. Put it under your left palm. Right hand to right knee. Just easy twist. First twist of the practice. So skillful, progressive, and slow. Extending length as well as rotation. Relax belly, inhale, squeeze the belly on the exhale. So take note that it's great if you can pull your shoulders down away from your ears a little bit. Beautiful. Let's come out of the twist. Set that block to the side, fingertips down, pause right here. Lift your left foot up, pivot it behind you. You're going to turn toward the left side of your mat as you come up in a kneeling warrior two. I've got my left hip stacked directly over my left knee. My right toes, my right knee is facing the top of the mat. You just bring your arms out now into a T-shape. So it's just like warrior two, but we're down 
on the ground and stretch out. Energize the line of energy on the underside of the arms. Turn your palms up. Inhale, bring them overhead, turn toward the left side of your mat. And then part your hands, return to gazing forward over the right fingertips. And let's just kind of make that fluid. Feel free to kind of rock your hips a little bit or kind of flow with it if you want to. And you get that, we develop that skill of effort and ease. You can kind of decide where in the body are you really going to want to put some solid, like strengthening effort, and where do you want to be more fluid? It's neat in a warrior two. Take uh, your right elbow, put it on your right thigh, and stretch up through your left arm. So this is like a modified side angle. And stay here with me. Make sure that your neck is relaxed. If you'd like to bring your right ribs forward toward that long edge of your mat and pull your left shoulder back more, see how that feels. And give a little more of a stretch from your left knee to your left hand. Good. And we're not collapsing, we're really holding our chest up. And as we lift out, good. Pause. Slide your right leg now so it's long and pivot on your right heel. So now you're getting ready for gate pose, facing the left side of your mat on the left knee. Right leg is straight. Right palm is on the outside of the right knee. And you go up with the left arm. Side bending over. Slide your right hand down your right leg. Reach it over. Breathing in, breathing out. Drop your tail. Hug your belly in a little bit. Come back to the center. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Drop onto your left fingertips or your left palm. And come into like a modified side plank here. You can have your right arm straight up or you can stretch your right fingertips way far beyond the top of your head. Lengthen out through your left leg, round through your left palm, stay stable in your left shoulder, and maybe you wanna lift your right leg up. Breathe. Find length, extension, lots of firm strength here. Maybe a few in the class wanna bend the right knee, reach the right hand back, and grab the right foot or the hem of your pants. Take this as a shoulder stretch, stretching the right shoulder open, also through the pelvis, and really nice stretch down through the right quadricep. Deeply breathing. Release the foot, right foot goes back down, push off your left hand. Come on up, bring your arms overhead, pause. All right, hands to your hips. Turn toward the top of your mat. Do what you need to do to get your way around. And we're going to go into downward facing dog from here. So curling those left toes under. Slide your right foot back to meet your left. Oh, and we'll stay. We'll pedal out the heels. And check in with your breathing. And how are your feet and ankles feeling? Does one leg feel significantly different than the other? It does for me. I'm gonna travel forward into a high plank. Pause. Drop your knees, uncurl your toes. Look forward, lower yourself down until your forehead can just barely tap the mat. Inhale, coming up, wide chest through cobra. Exhale to table. So align hands and knees where you want them. And now we're going to send back through the left heel and push like you're pushing the wall away from you. Firm your left quadricep, hug your low belly in, tucking the chin slightly in helps. Shift weight to your left hand, right fingertips go forward. And look from the center point of your body, stretch forward, stretch back. Make sure you're not clenching your jaw. Stay soft, calm gaze. Option to crunch if you'd like. Right elbow, left knee. Inhale, lengthen it back out. A few rounds like that. 
putting a sound to your breath or at least um, just some good strong awareness on the way that your breath is supporting the movement. Stretch, hold, stay there or bend the left knee, reach your right hand back, grab the left foot, push your left foot into your right hand, maybe your right shoulder opens a little bit here. Breathing. Release, put your right foot down, straighten that left leg, curl the toes under, put the ball of the left foot on the mat, push back to your left heel. Gaze down towards your thumbs. Nice deep stretch, left calf muscle, strengthening through the core, strong through the arms. And then as you lift that up, cross it over, come on the ball, stay on the ball of the left foot and now shorten your right side waist, peek over your right shoulder, lengthen through left side. Calm, steady presence, attention to the moment. And as you come out, bend your left knee, step your left foot forward. Pause right there. And then when you feel ready, come on up, stack your hands on the left knee. Make sure you feel stable. And you can pulse the pelvis toward left heel. We'll keep the left hand on the knee, the hands on the left knee for now. You feel into that stretch in the front of the right hip and how you're asking uh, left quadricep to really come online here. And settle and drop the hips. If you feel like it, take the arms up overhead, reach out, extend, and then soften the shoulders back and down. Stay or take the bind behind your back, palm to palm, interlace your fingers, lengthen your arms, keep sliding the chest open and the shoulders down toward your back waist. Steady breath, even if you're wobbling all over the place. And then when you unbind, pause, put your fingertips down and if you're going to use the block, bring it over on the mat under your right palm. Left hand to left knee, start your twist left, slow and steady. Cleansing opportunity here. Bring out the body. Let me go, regret, distraction, preoccupation. A little vacation from all that. As you release the twist, the block goes to the side, pause on your fingertips, lift your right knee up, pivot over, and put the foot down behind you. So I'm gonna have my back to you right now. So we're gonna move into that um, kneeling warrior two. Arms are out in a T. You might wanna take a peek forward and back and see that your palms are at the same height as your shoulders. Really send an extension out, softening the top side of the arms and energizing the underside of the arms. Find your breath here. If you need to move around a little bit, you can. And then we'll turn the palms up. In breath, we're overhead. And out breath, we come back down. A few times like that. You want to feel a strong lift from your right knee all the way up to your right shoulder. Quite a, a nice lift quality in the pose. And then we'll turn your arms right down to that T-shape and side angle, left elbow onto the left thigh bone, right arm comes up, pause with it straight up at 12 o'clock, find more extension on your right side waist, and then possibly take it a little bit more on the diagonal. Keep your chest square to the right side, long side of your mat, move your left ribs toward the long side of the mat a little more maybe, pull your right shoulder back, breathe. lift and travel right back up, pausing in warrior two, and then hands to the waist, lengthen out your left leg, pivoting to face your left toes toward 
the long side of your mat and take your left hand on the outside of your left thigh. Take your right arm straight up, side bend over. The compression left side waist and extension on the right side. Head is soft, no strain in the neck. And there's some core strength that lifts you up through the center. Look right, come down, either onto fingertips, or it could be a block, or the palm. And come up overhead with your left hand. And breathe, get long and extended from the top of your head to your left foot. Some of you might want to lift the left leg up, possibly bend left knee. Left hand grabs the left foot, open up. Breathe, soften through your jaw and your throat. Fully aware, fully present. When you release the foot, put it back down. Push off your right hand, come on up. You turn back toward the top of the mat and any way that you can, get yourself back to a downward facing dog. Mm. Ten breaths here. If you need a break, you know to come into child's pose. Maybe just move this pose around very mindfully, bending one knee at a time slowly, playing around with pulling the low belly up to assist the hips going up. There's a sinking feeling through the heels. And the hands are spread widely and you are pressing the mat forward and away from you in order to lengthen through the arms and the trunk of the body. Little wiggle with the head. Make sure you stay natural with your neck. dropping the knees down and we're just going to rotate forward and back so we're going to travel forward descending with the hips look forward lift your heart in breath is here it's a kneeling push up exhale push your hips towards your heels and let's travel just like that forward and back inhale full long extended breath exhale same thing use some of your core muscles to pull your hips back towards your heels and find your rhythm with that. Stay strong through the arms. Think about the arm muscles hugging onto the bones. Journey forward takes the whole inhalation and the pull back takes the entire exhalation. And then let's weave in along with that some circling. So the hips travel in a Big circle, pressing them maybe left, forward, right, and back. Twice more like that. The next time your hips are back, we'll pause and we'll go the other way. Right, forward, left, and back. forward one more time hold and we'll take five counts to lower to the ground I'm trying to build some upper body strength as we go also some nice flexibility to the spine so the pelvis comes down first you're slowly slowly going then comes the belly the ribs the chest pausing forward with the elbows for sphinx pose I want you to drop your gaze and see that your forearms are parallel to each other and that your elbow points are right in, in line with your armpits. Lift up your left leg, stretch it back, and place it back down on the ground again. And the same with the right. So you're really getting the body to feel very long and extended. And then put some pressure, light pressure, into the tops of your feet light pressure of the pelvis right down toward the mat 
and then a light pressure of pulling your elbows back towards your waist. Intention to open through the chest and stay relaxed through your neck. So I think some of you would be best served to drop the head a little bit. Others of you like to have the chin up and it doesn't cause you any distress. Make sure that your jaw is relaxed. Get a space between the teeth. Soft, soft face. Feel you are conditioning and toning the back body, all those muscles, in your calves, right back up to the back of your shoulders, activated in the front body open. Allow that all to soften. Take your elbows wide, stack your hands, put one cheek down, and sweetly bend your knees and swoosh your feet side to side. When you're halfway through practice, you should do a little check in with yourself. Are you staying present? And if not, just begin again. That's why we call it practice. Like start over if you kind of lost track of what you're doing and drifted off to other things it's okay and slow the rocking of the feet down let them pause in mid-air the head lifts turn the other way rest the head softly on the hands descend with the left foot slowly until you feel the toes of the left foot meet the ground and the same thing with the right slowly dropping until the toes of the right foot meet the ground. And five breath pause here to drop into the moment. All right, let's lift the head up and we're going to do a nice little shoulder stretch. You can have that block toward the front of your mat in case you're going to want it for your head. And there are two options. We're going to start with the right arm. So the gentlest way to treat your right shoulder is to have your right arm straight out, your left hand in front of your chest. You're going to lay your right ear on your right shoulder and roll onto your right side. So that's stage one. I most often teach this with the right arm straight out to the side. This is gonna give you a much bigger shoulder stretch. So if you are up for that, take your right arm straight out to the side, right palm is down, left hand still is placed in front of left chest, and then roll to the outer right hip. In the right side, the right side of your head can come to the mat, or if you're really tight in the shoulders, you might find that you wanna block under the right side of your head. And then what we're doing is we're lifting the left leg up, bending the knee, and dropping the left foot behind us, thinking about whether that left foot can maybe touch the mat. And then the right leg could stay straight. It could be bent. And this is where you'll start to kind of tweak and modify this to just suit your needs. If you're not feeling enough of a stretch in the right shoulder, um, stay where you are, but walk your right fingertips even further back behind you. Also, you can push into your left palm a little bit more, which would spin your chest more toward the long side of your mat instead of pointing it down. And there could be some who will take the left arm up, bend the left elbow, take that half bind, sliding your left fingertips across the back of your waistband toward the mat. And then relax a little bit. Find some place that you can soften. Try to soften your jaw and the right shoulder. If you're clenching to your right hip and your right leg, maybe you can soften there a tiny bit. Muscles relaxing, bones dropping. Lovely. We're gonna come out of that slowly, right back down to belly down. 
and the left knee, you're going to bring it out to the side for half a frog. My left leg is bent, my left knee is to the side. And then I'm going to bring both my hands around to stack them, make that nice little pillow and put my forehead back down. So if you're not feeling much or you want to do something different, then you can extend your left leg out to the side so it's straight, in which case both legs are straight. From the top of your right hip to your right toes is flat to the ground. And if you're taking this long leg extension that I'm demonstrating, then you have a long line from your pelvis out through the inseam of your left leg to your left foot. And then create for yourself some kind of stretch here. So we don't want this to be too passive. I want you to feel, feel something. And if that's not enough, you can keep all of that in place and come up into Sphinx pose with your upper body. Something for everybody. And breathe. Let your body drop into whatever opens up. settled on the sensation. You don't have to burrow in with the laser focus necessarily, but you can just choose to let that occupy the majority of your awareness and other things just kind of dissolve away. Nice. That left leg back in line. And uh, come into your choice, whether you want to be in child's pose or downward facing dog or take a little flow. Just listen to your body. About 10 breaths, uh, yogi's choice. Definitely want you to make a choice that does help your low back release. That's important after the belly down back bending. If you're feeling like you want a, a strengthening flow, follow me, high plank. Knees down, slow melt. Next in breath brings you up through Cobra. Hips now toward the heels and returning to downward facing dog. <sighs> Pedal out your heels. A few more breaths. Might be a few of you that want to stand on one foot, lift the other leg up for a little three legged down dog action. to meet up belly down all right let me get ready for that shoulder opener on the side i hope you're feeling good so remember gentle version will be the left arm forward right hand outside right chest lay your cheek on the your ear on the shoulder up and over with the right foot stronger is a left arm straight out to the side if I can roll over with this power pack in my pocket and then up and over we go. Remember, you can put the block under your head if you want to and see if your right foot will drop down behind. And if not, it can just dangle there. You can walk your left fingertips further behind you if you need a stronger stretch for your left shoulder. If you press into your right hand, you can spin the chest up a little bit. Good. And then some of us will take the right arm up, half bind, bend the right elbow, slide your hand along the back of your waistband, and be right here. Soften. Soften any clenching in your left hip or your jaw. Allow your left shoulder to open. Breathing. You're ready to come out. Bring the hand back around. We're coming into that half frog. So you're going to bend your right knee. Bring it outside your right hip. Relax, bring your hands around, stack them, lay your head on your hands. Let your pelvis drop. 
inside of the right hip descending. And if you want more, you can straighten that right leg out. And keeping drop down, you want to feel uh, both legs long for taking this version. You really do feel that distance from pelvis to feet. And lastly, if you want something more energizing, you can come up onto your elbows and be right here in a sphinx pose with one leg to the side. Listen to the wisdom of your body. Affecting what you can do today or want to do today. legs back online on the mat and then again yogi's choice whatever you want to do child's pose down dog or a flow in your body what it needs I feel like most of us you probably pushed yourself today you had things that were required of you that weren't actually uh, maybe in your best interest at every moment but this is all about what is in your best interest you want to flow, high plank, knees down, gazes forward, slow lower, forehead honors the earth, and then up, exhale, down dog, poor child's pose. So finish up. We're going to meet on our backs. We're going to do the remainder of our sequencing on the back. So, whenever you're ready for that, I think having your block is a great idea. And if you have a strap, um, let's get those out. In there. First of all, for starters, Let's just enjoy laying on our backs. Hug the knees. Rock a little side to side. Different view in the, of the room, right? Where you are. Different parts of the body now getting to ground and connect with the earth. Come back to listening to your breath, noticing subtlety. Good. Please put your left foot down. Keep your right foot up and take that strap and put it around the ball of your right foot. And as you lengthen your right leg, reach up with both hands, grab the strap. I like to take a loop. And that makes the strap feel like it's got a pretty good grip. My hands have a good grip on the strap. And then drop your head and shoulders, even the back of your neck. Think about the back of the neck descending. Right from the shoulders, there's a descent down the whole back body, it includes every vertebrae of the spine, the back side of the pelvis. And then from this rooted, grounded pelvis, out you can push it through the right heel any amount if you have sensitivity in your low back great idea to keep the left leg bent the left foot down and if not you can straighten your right leg uh, and then let's make some movement with the right foot using the hands to guide it around maybe rocking a little side to side forward and back maybe a little circles I want you to feel this not only in your hamstrings, but down into the right hip socket. And a little bit of stillness here. I like to take my elbows out to the side a little bit. 
in line with my shoulders that just works for my body so you can try that and your right leg doesn't have to be stick straight and I've got a bend in my right knee that's what my knees like breathing relax your pelvis square to the ground and if you feel like you want to do the next step both straps go in the right hand left arm comes out to the side becomes an anchor and then slowly take your right foot to the right keeping generous extension with both legs and keeping your left heel on the ground breathe your way into beautiful straddle stretch here feel that you're wide across the chest both shoulders squarely on the ground. Steady, calm, very full breaths. And as the right foot comes up, switch the straps into your left hand, so both straps, left hand, right arm out to the side as an anchor, and then drawing your right leg across midline and it doesn't have to be much you might like to keep your hips level and grounded and only take your right leg slightly to the left until you feel a stretch outside of the right hip all the way through the out seam of the right leg maybe even all the way to the foot right foot back up bend your left leg once again and put your left foot down as you bend your right knee cross your right ankle over your left thigh bone set the strap to the side and we're going to drop the legs left so you swing them on over and for some of us the sole of the right foot will touch the ground maybe for some of us not uh, for some of us we'll take the left hand on the right knee slide the left hand down the right shin and see if you can get a grip on your right ankle left leg is generously bent and then you might want to turn your gaze straight up to the sky or even over to the right feel, feel what's happening in the outside of both hips Stay relaxed and aware, observant, generously patient with the body as it stretches and opens. Right, we're going to come out, so whatever's the most skillful way for you to do that do so and come into a long body stretch right down the center of your mat legs are long arms can come way overhead reach as far as you can from the navel to the fingertips navel to the feet inhale everything's tightening up tightening up exhale relax enjoy the moment legs and put your right foot on the mat Grab that strap again we'll elevate your left foot and put the strap around the ball of your left foot it wouldn't be surprising if you're much tighter or looser on one side than the other when it comes to the hamstrings and again here's a grounding a connecting with the earth a yielding to gravity through the back of the head shoulders pull back of your torso down to your hips and from there there's an extension out through the left leg you can just play around you might do a little movement to see how you can get into kind of the sweetest stretch that isn't a struggle but it, i'm sure it'll be effort 
And if you're protecting a sensitive low back, your right leg stays bent. And if you're not, you can straighten the right leg if you want to. Breathe, explore, experiment, move that foot around. Bring it into a still place and just settle for some moments here. pelvis to drop and the left leg to extend. Both straps now go into the left hand, right arm straight out to the side, grounding and pressing down, allowing you to take the left leg over to the side. Keep your right heel connected to the ground, your right thigh bone pulling down. Head yourself out into nice, generous straddle stretch here. And just like you're wide across the pelvis, you're wide across the chest. Full body breaths. to help you lift the left leg back up to your left foot is overhead. Switch the straps. And then the right hand, left arm is out to the side, grounding you. And take your left leg across the center line a tiny bit or more if you'd like. Do what it takes to get a great strong stretch from your outer left hip to your left foot. And as your left foot comes back up overhead, bend your right knee, put your right foot flat on the ground, bend the left knee, cross the left ankle over the right thigh bone and set the strap to the side. And dropping legs all the way to the right. So keep on dropping them, dropping them. For some of us, the sole of the left foot will touch the ground. Some of us will take the right hand and be able to grab the left ankle and kind of keep that firm hold. And uh, we'll all soften both shoulders down, turning the head the way that it serves you best, maybe straight up, maybe slightly to the left. Thank you feel, create a good, strong stretch outside of both hips. care. Let's come out and hug both the knees in towards your chest. Wrap your arms around. Rock a little side to side. And you can stay here. You can just grab for the feet and stay with the feet close in. Or you can come into happy baby, elevating the heels and the soles of your feet face flat up toward the ceiling. Usually a little rocking feels good here. Be able to give a gentle press down with the low back, area of the kidneys. Then you come into bridge little supported shoulder stand and then we're about done. Let's bring the knees together and put your feet down flat. We'll have your block close by. Arms down by your sides. And let's press into the feet and sometimes you might find that you have to kind of lift and wiggle things around a little bit to get your feet in exactly the right spot where you want them. A few things you could do with your arms. If you haven't uh, tried it recently, you can with your hands grab the edges of your mat 
And then when you push your feet into the mat, the hold that you have with your hands on the mat will help keep the arms long. And you might find that you get a good little stretch up through the neck and shoulders by doing that. Others of you likely will want to take a bind, walking the backs of the arms under, driving down with your arms, and then really broadly and powerfully pushing into your feet, using the strong glutes to lift the pelvis up. Breathe deeply. Maybe you get a glimpse of the belly expanding on the in-breath. Settling on the out breath without collapsing, staying really strong in the pose. When one part of the body is strong, it can facilitate the opening in another part of the body. For five, four, three, two, one. Pause. Unbind if you took it. Reach for your block. Take the block and put it underneath you so you can land your tailbone on the block and just pause here. Maybe your elbows are on the ground and your hands are on your belly. Relax, especially if you put a lot into that bridge pose. Mm. Staying here, resting, integrating, or maybe you would like to extend the legs out longer and then gently take the arms overhead. Let the body rest. Let the mind clear and calm. Present moment awareness. Letting everything be as it is. If you'd like, one knee at a time, bring your knees in and float your feet up. Might be helpful at this time to bring your arms down by your side. Let the hips rest really substantially on the block. Notice how your feet feel, if there's any sensation, whether it's subtle or bold. about perching your feet right above your hip sockets so there's minimal effort to hold your feet up. And then you're breathing, you're relaxing. Bend your knees. You put your feet down. Uh, lift your hips up. Take the block out and we'll spend a few moments uh, on our backs with our legs in a diamond shape. Take the soles of your feet together. Rest. go. <laughs> ah, right. And um, then from there, any last moves that you need to do to get ready for Shavasana? If you need to pull the knees back in or kind of drop your knees side to side and some kind of a stretch, uh, like a little twist, you can do that. Otherwise, you're ready to rest.
long sigh, even with sound, could be very therapeutic. Ah. Find the vocal cords to relax completely. Starting to let the body just settle. Say yes to that draw of gravity earthward. And saying yes to the chance to be at ease in your own skin. Just at home with how things are, whether they're optimal or not, it doesn't matter. You feel the easy way that your body is breathing itself. Think about how many body systems are going on all the time that we don't have to make happen. It's automatic. space where you're practicing, your connection to your sense of you, bigger you than usual, any kind of connection to your energy that you know is broader and deeper and fuller. jaw to relax, see your tongue to soften into the lower jaw. Allow your eyes to softly close, relaxing through the eyes, forehead, cheeks, lips, chin, jaw. Relaxation flowing down through your neck, your throat, trickling down into your collarbones and out, swirling through your shoulders, relaxing any tension that remains in your shoulders, and flowing right down through your arms, extending all the way to the tips of your fingers, feeling presence of the hands, you're carrying nothing, you're doing physical chest, there's ease through your emotional heart. As you've come home to yourself, there's something deep inside of you that knows that all is well. Maybe you're touching into that. You feel the general letting go of the whole chunk of the body, and the feeling of melting or widening broadening, settling. And there's the gentle breath, maybe barely detectable in the nostrils, down into the belly, just there. Life's gift to you. you feel the way that your hips are relaxing more and more, so they might feel wider, deeper, heavier, or even lighter. So, how things are unfolding for you. Feel how your legs are getting more and more relaxed also. If the leg muscles relax, the thigh bones are allowed to feel heavier and they pull you down toward Mother Earth in just such a beautiful way. Notice your knees relaxing and your calf muscles softening. And there's an easeful flow just right all the way down to your feet, even out to the tip of each toe. And the softness through the soles of your feet. tension that needed to find its way out, it could just flow out to the soles of your feet. And it's just you bathed in the waves of natural breath. 
you're calm, you're grounded, you're balanced, you're at ease. You have no worry, no fear. You're being held, supported, and given exactly what you need in this moment and in every moment. Letting the quiet invite you into your ground of being. Peaceful. Touching back into the reading that I began with, learning to trust your body, its signs and signals. You are open now, more sensitive than you've ever been before. You're at peace. Whatever change comes, you're established and rooted. You're grounded in love for self and for others. Thanking your body for helping you. Thanking the universe for what it's about to do for you and thanking spirit because change will always have a way of bringing you closer to love ultimately. Friends and yogis, I hope that you stay and rest longer. I really, really do. It's been a pleasure leading you in practice tonight. And I send each one of you wishes for peace, health and happiness now and always. Namaste, and I look forward to our next class together. Take care.